Meniere's disease is more than just an inner ear balance hearing tinnitus problem. In fact, Meniere's disease hurts your brain structure and function. I know most people don't know that, but I'm taking a few minutes today to explain how that occurs, why it matters, and really why it's important to get your Meniere's disease process under control now. Because if you're still having Meniere's symptoms like episodic attacks, still having dizziness problems, still having, you know, fluctuating tinnitus and hearing, it's really important to get that under control now because your brain depends on it. So let's get into it. Okay, so Meniere's disease is a disease of the inner ear. That's what most people think of it as. However, research has shown that Meniere's disease has negative effects on your central brain structure. So let me just talk about peripheral versus central. So in your peripheral uh, area, we've got your inner ear, we've got your semicircular canals, we've got your cochlea, you know, the organs of balance and hearing. And Meniere's disease essentially crushes those from the inside out. Uh, due to inflammation and some other factors. And I've got other issues, other videos on that. I'm not really going to explain like what causes a Meniere's disease at this point. But the point is, is that as Meniere's disease gets worse and you have it over time, it essentially chokes off the information that your inner ear can provide to your brain. Now, keep in mind that your brain needs this sensory information because, you know, your hearing, your balance, that's a form of sensory information. And your brain needs sensory information to function appropriately. In fact, kind of the way I think about it is like, you know, the back half of your brain is very sensory. So that's where all your joints and muscles and sight and sound and hearing and vestibular sensation, they come in and your brain essentially uses that as food to keep the front half of your brain working correctly. Now, the front half of your brain is largely your frontal lobes and that's basically you. Uh, that's everything that makes you you is in your frontal lobes. So follow me here. Nerve cells anywhere need fuel and they need activation. And this sensory information that should be coming from your inner ear, the hearing and the balance and the vestibular, that's a form of sensory information and it is literally activating the other brain areas that it's connected to. So what research has found is that Meniere's disease, because it's choking that information off, it causes structural and functional changes in other brain areas. Specifically, we're talking about areas like the hippocampus, uh, the frontal lobes, the cingulate gyrus. There's other areas I could get into, but the point is that those areas, when their structure and their gray matter and their volume decreases, they're gonna malfunction. And guess what kind of symptoms that that causes? It causes problems with spatial orientation and dizziness and attention problems and memory problems. Uh, so it can kind of exacerbate what the Meniere's disease is already causing. Now I made a video a, a little while back talking about the quality of life in Meniere's patients. And what we know is that Meniere's patients have a high rate of anxiety and depression. But guess what? These brain areas that Meniere's disease negatively affects also are linked to problems with anxiety and depression. So the question is, is the Meniere's patient having anxiety and depression because, you know, having Meniere's really sucks, or are they having anxiety and depression because Meniere's is causing central problems that are causing them to have anxiety and depression? And for me, the, the big point of making this video is that you need to get your Meniere's disease process under control now because the longer you have the Meniere's disease, the more it's fluctuating, the worse it's getting, the more you're going to be pretty much guaranteed that these brain areas I'm talking about, frontal lobe, cingulate gyrus, hippocampus, and other areas, it's also going to decrease. And they're also going to be in trouble. And then you have that you've got to deal with. So what do you do? Well, if you're still having Meniere's disease symptoms, right? Fluctuating tinnitus, hearing loss, these episodic vertigo, uh, the nausea, the dizziness, you've got to work with someone that understands the nature of that and understands what to look for. And if you guys have watched my videos uh, very much at all, you'll know that for me, 90% of the people that make it to me with Meniere's that's not stable have a problem with their immune system. Now, there's a bunch of different types of immune system problems there could be, but you got to work with someone that knows how to investigate for those. Now, me, in my office, I do primarily what's called lymphocyte immunophenotyping. It's like getting your immune system fingerprinted. I do multiple tissue antibody testing, and there's a bunch of other things I do as well, but you need to find someone that knows how to do that stuff, knows how to order the tests, how to interpret them, you know, what do you do about it? And then also, you just gotta find someone who's willing to be a detective because you have to understand that the vast majority of people you're gonna see uh, that treat Meniere's disease, they really only have a few things to give you. Steroids, 
beta histine, low sodium diet, diuretic. That's pretty much it. And if that doesn't work, then you're kind of out of luck. But there is a lot more you can do if you know how to dig for it and if you know how to look for it. And so I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping you find someone that can help you do that. So let me review the video here, right? Meniere's disease, yes, it does cause problems with inner ear function, right? Vestibular function, hearing function, but it also hurts central brain structures, the frontal lobe, the cingulate gyrus, the hippocampus, and other areas. And dysfunction in those areas causes their own set of symptoms that also look a lot like what Meniere's causes, but also anxiety and depression. So uh, it's really important that you get your Meniere's disease process under control right now by working with someone that understands all the things I've talked about on my channel, all the different immune system aspects, because your brain health depends on getting your Meniere's disease under control now. I uh, hope you guys found that helpful and I'll see you next time.